so here is the standard required to make it on YouTube. And then here is the standard that cryptocurrency videos are. Hello. If we're looking at the markets, well, they're doing pretty well, I suppose. But uh, do you know what's interesting? Bitcoin dominance has come down a bit. Market cap is steadily growing. 420 billion, not bad at all. Nice. EOS though, EOS is continuing to impress. I mean, does anyone remember days of 50 cents? Ah, that was nice. Amazingly, it continues to charge upwards towards the end of its ICO. Not only is it quite high, because it is, but it's achieving almost parity with its previous all-time high, which very few coins have managed to do, because so many of them were so valued. We had, let me see here. Yeah, even the Binance listing for Golem, which sees a potential, I didn't see it here, but maybe CoinMarketCap hasn't updated yet, a 15% rise on the day, pretty good. You have a look at the charts though for Golem, and it is well off its all-time high, and many, many charts show the same pattern. Most coins had this previous history, and are still trying to reclaim it, not EOS. Some non-financial advice for you, the pullback seems to have ended. We withdrew on Bitcoin prices to around 8650, coming back up to 9200, 9300, testing those resistance. Currently, we're on par to look at the next major resistance level at 9900, but should we pull back from here, it's predicted that, do you know what, it doesn't really matter, do you know, what could potentially throw out all of this technical analysis? This, the curse, no, not this. The curse that is Mount Gox continues to haunt us. Here is a harrowing tale as you probably ever heard. The Shining ain't got nothing on this. Mount Gox moves around $165 million in Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash from its wallets. They've now been moved from out of cold wallets associated with infamous now defunct Japanese Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox. Today, well this was yesterday, about 18 hours ago, the wallets are under the control of Mt. Gox's bankruptcy trustee, I'm not going to try and pronounce that name, as displayed on the cold wallet monitor. The exchange has moved over 16,000 Bitcoins worth $144 million and 16,000 Bitcoin cash worth around $21.7 million. We don't currently know if they've already been sold. I think that would be best case scenario, wishful thinking. Some reports claimed that the previously reported 400 million Mt. Gox sell-off from December through February led to Bitcoin prices dropping as low as $6,000 in February. This might have been exacerbating the situation. We were due for a pullback at some point anyway, but yes, maybe this was a major reason behind it. More of that to come. Don't know. Let's move on. Bitcoin Cash. An upcoming Bitcoin Cash hard fork is coming, although it's not quite contentious. It's not likely to result into a fork and then two coins of Bitcoin Cash. But why are they doing it? So the block size is going to be increased from 8 megabytes to 32 megabytes, a quadrupling of its transactional capacity in a block. Now, this is planned. It seems to be more of a case of how come it took so long rather than why are you doing it now? I don't believe they actually need it, but uh, it was always the case going forward. And I know it always sparks a debate right now, especially right now um, with Bitcoin.com displaying Bitcoin as BCH and Bitcoin Core as BTC. The debate is raging now, probably more so than ever. Here's my two cents. There is almost no point to debating because there is no perfect answer. Basically, if you're on Bitcoin side, then you have accusations of SegWit being complicated and corporations having their fingers in the Lightning Network. Or if you're on Bitcoin Cash's side and you have accusations of increasing the block size so that peers of normal monetary value, I'm trying to say anyone that's not a corporation can't afford to run a full node. Or how about this? both of them having an ASIC monopoly on mining. Profit attracts corporate interests, and either way, we're going to have to deal with some stuff that we'd probably rather not. Not only is the block size increasing, but data storage capacity on the blockchain is also getting a slight boost. Imagine sending a memo with your transaction as well. So not just that, but lastly, we do have smart contracts being enabled. Now, I'm not a, an expert in the field by any stretch of the imagination, my knowledge on the subject is quite limited, but I imagine it is not so advanced as an Ethereum smart contract, probably a lot more rudimentary. For example, 
You could have dynamic if-then programming statements. Now, this was originally implemented by Satoshi Nakamoto back in the day, but he removed it because he was worried about it being an attack vector. Today, they're saying that they've had many years to shore up these holes and are now implementing it. Moving on, we're going to take a look at Cardano. They have announced a considerable step forward in their proof-of-stake model, releasing a paper known as the Ouroboros Genesis. What is that? Well... This feature matches the security guarantees of proof-of-work protocols in a way that was previously thought infeasible. So essentially, proof-of-work is being the preferred method for a lot because of its security proof-of-stake, better for the environment, but potentially not as secure until now. What does the market think of that? 7%. I haven't read the paper myself. I'll link it below if you want to check it out, though. Moving on to Tron. Justin Sun. Uh, recently had an interview with regards to Tron, and he said that there is a big announcement in May before the mainnet launch. In May. Okay, sometime in May. Sometime next month. NEM. We don't usually talk about NEM, but they do have some news to report on today, so let's cover it. I, think, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Midgen, NEM's private chain, has been adopted for use by the Azure marketplace running on Microsoft Japan's Azure cloud platform. Good job. Sia coin gets a Korean one pairing and of course goes nuts because Korea moving on to ethos ethos universal wallet launched beta to some pre-registration members apparently it's beautiful gifto smashes into the top 100 today with over 40 percent gains why confirmation of Udbit adding a Korean one trading pair so is it a speculation no it's officially live now Koreans Lovely people. It's pretty much the most interesting stuff. There's always news to talk about. There's never a day where there's nothing for me to talk about. Yesterday, I had the day off, but I was spending time with family. I watched a new Marvel movie, which is kind of good as far as superhero movies go. But yeah, that's all for me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. How cringy.